Hi, my name is Jason Edwards and welcome to the first online training course of Negotiating with Narcissists. Now many people say you cannot effectively negotiate with someone who has got a narcissistic disorder. You really can, but you need to approach the negotiation and any interaction you have with them incredibly differently. The first thing we need to actually discover when we're going to negotiate with anyone with a narcissistic disorder is it's actually all about us. Before you even think about negotiating with anyone who's got a narcissistic disorder or dealing with anyone on a daily basis you really have to make sure that your own emotional and your own mental state is in really good order. This is one of the absolute cornerstones for negotiating effectively. Think about it this way. If your mind was a suit of armour and you had gaps in that suit of armour, a narcissist could get in behind those gaps could get into your armour and really start to play games with your mind. And that is what they do. So this is why we want to be emotionally really sound first. And that's why we say in this first training course, it's all about you. So how do we prepare our mind? Well, the first rule is seek help. If you have any emotional issues in your life, you need to deal with them first. Go and see a professional. Go and get some professional help to make sure you're on solid ground emotionally. You might have something like a metaphobia, which makes you a people pleaser. But before you go in and start to open any negotiations on a regular basis with someone with narcissistic intent, make sure that you're solid, grounded, and feel emotionally in a really good place because they will spot those chinks in your armour as I said and they will exploit them but they are the worst people who you should be opening up to you want to stay close to people like that and later on we're going to talk about just being the rock just being solid and grounded and giving them nothing at all because I guarantee you anything that you give to a narcissist they will turn back against you and use on you. So, how do we develop the right mindset? Well, this is what everyone gets wrong. Lots of people think that if you're going to take someone on in a really tough negotiation, particularly if that person can be manipulative, that you need to be really strong, really fortified, maybe load yourself up with caffeine, get yourself really tense, really anxious, ready for the fight. That is all wrong. That is the worst way to go into a negotiation with anyone because they will use your strength against you, almost like verbal jiu-jitsu. The best way to approach anyone who you think is going to try and manipulate your mind, play mind games with you, is from a really calm, relaxed state. You almost want to just slow your brain right down. And this is what I teach people to do. Don't get anxious, don't get tense. Be chilled out, be calm. Drink water, meditate. You're actually gonna find that more effective than loading up on caffeine and going into battle like you have just got an axe in each hand and you're ready to kill this person. You want to use their strengths against them. And the only way you do this is with a secure, steady, calm, relaxed mind. Everything starts and finishes with breathing. And I know everyone's thinking we've probably heard this all before and talking about calm, deep, relaxed breaths, but I promise you, this is how you start to develop a strong, calm, relaxed mind. If you're going to take someone on in a really tough negotiation, 
You have to make sure you're steady, focused and calm. And the way we do this is through breathing. Breathing is essential for calming the body and steadying the nerves. If you're taking short, raspy, gaspy little breaths going in and out and in and out and in and out, your mind is going to behave that way. You're going to speed up the way you're talking. You're not going to be in control of your thoughts. You're going to agree to things you don't want to agree to. You're going to say things you regret. You're going to walk out of that meeting and you're going to know not a clue as to what's just happened. However, if you actually spend some time just being calm, relaxed and focused, you will actually feel like you can really deal with someone. So always start practicing deep, slow, start strong, steady breathing. And that's one big deep breath in through the nose. Just breathe all the way in. Fill the lungs, fill the whole of the body. Hold on to that for a while and then slowly let that out. This needs to become something that you just do automatically. Take another really deep, slow breath in. Just let that fill your whole body and then slowly let that out. Notice, the more you do this, the calmer and the more relaxed you will start to feel. You didn't actually think that one of the cornerstones of negotiating with a narcissist was going to be about breathing, did you? Well, let me assure you, if you've got control of your own body, your own mind, it's going to be more difficult for a narcissist to take control of it. So always practice this. Practice good mental health and guard your own mentality and physicality. And the way you do this is by being steady and focused. So again, just take another deep breath in. Let that fill the whole body and then slowly just let that breath back out again. This is one of your building blocks here to taking control of your own mind. And as I said, if you've got control of your own mind, nobody else can take possession of it. The next thing you really want to consider is your posture. Now, when I was growing up, we were always taught to have good posture, to have a straight back, pull your shoulders back, hold your head up. But nobody actually spoke about the emotional and mental benefits of what that can actually do for you. If you're sitting slouched, hunched forward, with your head in your hands like this, your head down, you're not going to feel great about yourself. You're going to feel low, you're going to feel unempowered, you're going to feel like somebody could just walk all over you. How you use your body actually affects your mind and your brain. So again, your second building block is posture. If you actually hold yourself well, if you actually sit in a calm, relaxed pose with your shoulders back, your head tilted ever so slightly up, just notice how that makes you feel and take in a really long, slow, deep breath. Slowly let that out. This is where you're starting to feel strong. This is where you're starting to feel empowered. If you can just let those deep, slow, steady breaths coming all the way in and all the way out and hold a really good, strong posture you're starting to advance now. This is emotionally where you need to be, in a calm and relaxed state. Next is attitude. So many people love to use the word attitude. They say, I've got attitude and I'm going to give them attitude. What does that actually mean? It doesn't actually mean anything. 
If you're one of those people who likes to say, I'm going to go in there with attitude, think about what that actually means. You're just showing up as someone who you're not. You're just going in there, all guns blazing, and you are going to be so easy to trip, pull over, and actually knock sideways. Don't go in there with attitude. If you want to have an attitude, develop an attitude of strength, develop an attitude of calmness, develop an attitude of total relaxation and self-ownership. That is a much stronger, much more preferred way to be. You're going to feel professional, you're going to feel calm and you're going to be really solid. People who go in with attitude and just be prepared to rock the boat can be so easily tipped over. It's like somebody moving towards you really, really quickly and all you've got to do is move a little bit to get out of the way and they just come crashing down. Again, always remember, it's like verbal jiu-jitsu. You use the other person's strength against them, particularly when you're going to deal with a narcissist. The calmer, the more relaxed you are, the more self-ownership you have, the better emotional state you're going to be in, and the harder it's going to be for somebody else to rock your boat. So take your attitude face off, because attitude on its own is not a valued commodity. It's just something people say when they feel like being loud. You're going to start playing the game on a much higher level now. And this is how you play it. So now we're starting to feel calm, we're more relaxed, we've lost that rank amateur attitude, attitude. We need to really start getting the correct mindset. This is where a lot of people are going to struggle, but I can show you an easy way to do this. You need to get the correct mindset. Now the correct mindset when dealing with someone of a narcissistic intent is a non-emotive, non-emotional mindset. It's the emotions, it's your emotions that a narcissist will use against you. If you're in a calm, centered, non-emotional state, then they are going to find it extremely difficult, almost impossible, to actually get the better of you. Now here's a great game you can actually play when you're in the company of anyone with narcissistic intent. It's called Stay Out of the Emotions. Now the winner is the one who can last the longest and not get emotional. The loser is the first one who gets into that agitated emotional state. Just think how that feels. If somebody presses one of your buttons emotionally, you start to make mistakes. You get riled up, you get angry, you get upset, and they're really good at pressing your buttons and doing that. Remember, no matter what they say, no matter what they do, stay centered and focused. Just keep using the logical brain and don't go into the emotions. So how do you do that? Because people will say, it's easy to just sit there and say, don't get emotional, but I always do. I'm going to teach you now a really quick psychological trick for staying out of the emotions and in the logical side of the brain. Whenever somebody says something to you in any negotiation, in any interaction, ask yourself, logically, what do I want here? What do I want to achieve? What are my outcomes? What am I looking for? Because when they're coming at you with emotional language, you can counter that in your own head where you have complete control with a logical question to yourself. You can even ask yourself, what are they attempting to do? Are they attempting to upset me emotionally? And move all of that emotion to the logical side of your brain. This is what gives us that little edge, that little trick 
to actually stay in control of our emotions. Keep questioning, keep asking yourself in that nice, slow, calm mindset and remember your breathing, that nice, slow, deep breaths, good posture and ask yourself logical questions. Now when you're dealing with anyone on a level where you're going to have to negotiate, no matter what it's for, if they're narcissistic, they've only got one trick. And that one trick is to drag you out of your current reality and into theirs. I write about this constantly in my book. It is the only trick they've got. It is their greatest weapon. Psychological manipulation for the narcissist comes from reality distortion and they will put you in that reality distortion field but actually it's really easy to do with if you want to know how to negotiate well with a narcissist you need to just stay in the moment so how do we do this how do we stay in the moment when they're trying to move our mind backwards and forwards all the time well the first thing to do is to get out of the blaming habit you have to be non-blaming. And I'm not saying that you have to just completely forgive and forget anything this person's ever done because they may have done horrendous things to you in the past. And actually, yeah, they might be trying to do more horrendous things to you in the future. But for the moment when you're dealing with them, keep your thoughts here. Don't let them guide you off and lead you off to memories, and don't let them project your thoughts into the future because this is where their reality distortion field kicks in. They can start to paint pictures of a world that doesn't really exist and how bad things are going to be or how great things are going to be if you do what they say. Or they might try and drag you back to times in the past when you had things done to you or they'll tell you dreadful things that were done for them. All of this is about trying to control and manipulate your emotions. If they're attempting to do this, keep your thoughts here. Don't go with the movies. Don't go with the pictures they try and project onto you. Keep yourself centered and focused. Again, go into that logical brain. What's my outcomes here? What am I attempting to achieve? Do I want a pay rise? Am I going to tell this person I'm ending this abusive relationship today? That is your focus that you need to stick with. Stay out of their reality distortion field. You could even write down for yourself visual clues. If you went into a meeting and you felt there was someone there who is always coercive, always manipulative, you could write things down in front of you to remind you, stay centered, stay focused, stay out of the emotions. You could even have a great little motivational speech that you've prepared for yourself that you could go over and over again. I'm strong, I'm centered, I'm focused. I'm strong, I'm centered, I'm focused. Just say that now. Say that and practice that with that calm breathing. I'm strong, I'm centered, I'm focused. Notice how that makes you feel. Notice how if somebody was trying to move you, trying to get the better of your emotions, just coming back with, I'm strong, I'm centered, I'm focused, is a good reminder of where you need to be. And really feel those deep, calm breaths coming in and out. You need to plan a strategy. Now this is something that so many people get wrong in life and in fact some people don't even really know what a strategy is but they actually think they do. A strategy is nothing more than your end goal, your outcome, what you're finally attempting to achieve. Tactics are all of those small things that you will put in place to actually achieve your end strategy. Dead simple. If you haven't got a strategy if you haven't got an end result, if you haven't got a total outcome for yourself, you might as well just be a ship, a drift at sea with the wind blowing you left, right and all over the place. 
and believe you me, a narcissist, they will be the wind that blows your sails all over the place. And remember, if you don't know how to control, if you don't know how to guide your own ship, they will just take you where they want to take you. So think, sit and prepare. What is my outcome? What is my strategy here? Sit and write this down before you go in to negotiate with someone and it will help you stay focused. Have it written at the bottom of the page because that is the last thing that you want to be seeing when you go all the way to the end. Have I achieved this strategy? Have I achieved this outcome? If you haven't, then you need to keep negotiating so you've aligned yourself further and closer towards it. You may even want to have certain questions wrote down for yourself. Again, what is it I want to achieve here today? How am I going to achieve this? What is it I want to be looking to come out of this meeting with? What am I not going to allow this person to do? Those are the important things that you need to think of. And you can actually write some of your tactics down just before your strategy. Calm mind, empowered sentence, deep, calm, relaxed breathing. And never, never, ever, ever, when you're interacting with a narcissist, agree to anything at the spur of the moment. Remember, in any interaction, in any negotiation, the strongest negotiation position is always to walk away. You can walk away at any time you wish to, and it's absolutely fine. So you don't have to agree to anything, you don't have to agree to any course of action, you can think it over. That is what the narcissist will hate. They will want to move you into some heated up emotional state, and when they think they've got you where they want you, wham! They will hit you up with that question, hit you up with that manipulation, coerce you into agreeing to do something you didn't even want to do. Slow it down. Take your time. Your end outcome might actually be to not be manipulated. But you want to go with something more empowered with that. You want to go with something stronger. Remind yourself, what do I want? When negotiating with a narcissist, you need to learn how to play chess and poker at the same time. Now, first of all, don't worry. You might not have a clue how to play chess and you might not have a clue how to play poker. It's the ethos of both of those games that really matters. Narcissists are actually great at combining both of those games and playing them both at the same time. So let's just break this down. What is chess? What is poker? and how can you use them? Chess is probably one of my favorite games in the world. It really helps improve your mind. It's all about planning ahead. It's about thinking several moves ahead. Now, like I said, don't worry. If you're not a great chess player, that's fine. You can write your moves down. You don't have to memorize them all. But just think about this. A chess game has one outcome. That is for you to actually capture the opponent's king so they cannot move any more. You do that by moving your pieces around the board in a strategic way to achieve that outcome. Your opponent will also move their pieces around the board and plan ahead to try and counter your moves and also to try and capture your king. This is what it's like dealing with a narcissist. You need to plan several moves ahead. You need to be thinking to yourself, if I say this, what are they going to say? Then if I say that, what are they going to say? This might sound like a really laborious, long-winded approach to negotiation, but believe you me, it will pay dividends when you are negotiating with a narcissist and you want to capture their king and keep your own protected. Now the other game you really want to consider when negotiating with narcissists is poker. Poker is a game all about bluffing or lying and this is why narcissists actually excel at it. Within poker you're given three or four cards and you bet a certain amount of chips or money on how good you think your cards are as opposed to how good your opponents are. 
But here's the thing with poker. It's really open-ended and it's not like chess. There are rules to it, but you don't have to really work within an organized frame or field, unlike a chessboard. With poker, you can get the worst hand in the game and you can just go all in. You can bluff people out and you can say to them, I've got the best cards here and if you go up against me, you're going to lose. This is pure narcissistic thinking. They will always do this. They will always attempt to bluff you out on something. I always remember many years ago, a guy I knew came to see me at work one day and went, I've got some really bad news for you. Your friend last night was really running you down in the club and really putting you down in a major way. I knew this guy had narcissistic tendencies and I was absolutely fed up with the games that he was playing. So I did the one thing that I actually knew that I could do to this guy. I called his bluff straight away. I went, right, okay, I'm going to pick up the phone to that guy ask him right now why he was running me down in front of you. So I picked up the phone and started to dial. And the guy was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, when I say he was running you down, he, he might not have been running you down. It might have just been something he was saying. And he really started to back off and backpedal. The guy never, ever attempted to coerce or manipulate me again that way. I called his bluff. It's always worth digging and looking for all the facts and data when you're dealing with a narcissist in any negotiation because they will attempt to just bluff, lie, cheat any way they can. But you can counter that by drilling down and digging down into the reality of the situation. And you can do this by a series of really good questions. You can ask them who, what, when, where, how. And not only that, you can tell them you're going to check on those facts as well before you do anything, before you make any moves, any decisions on what they've told you. If something doesn't sound right, call their bluff. Really go all in. Make them put their cards down on the table. And I guarantee you they will back off if they are not being 100% on the line. So just remember this when you're dealing with narcissists. If they are up in the ante, if they are throwing more and more chips in the pot, if they're getting more irate, if they're getting more angry, they're attempting to bluff you even more. And this will just be one of the moves that they are making across the chessboard. Now this is where I say you have to be clever with narcissists because it's that combination of chess and poker. They will bluff, they will use poker moves on a chessboard to confuse the hell out of you. But if you are planning ahead, if you are keeping your mind calm, staying out of the emotions, willing to question them and call their bluff, you can come out of this in a really good place. Okay, finally, practice makes perfect. This again is something we all hear, but it's something we just don't do. If you practice having a really good, strong, slow, calm mindset, it will become who you are every day. And actually, that is what you're looking to do here. You might be actually looking for a level of self-improvement. And that's the one thing that narcissists can actually do for us in our life. Boy, they can really help us self-develop. If we want to, instead of running from the fight, we can actually stay grounded. But stay focused. Think about how you want to be. Practice on your own. Sit. Practice that slow thought, that thinking things through. Having that really lovely deep breathing coming in and out. Focus on your posture. That nice calm mindset. And also rehearse. You can sit with a friend and rehearse with them your negotiations. You can even sit there and try and emotionally push each other's buttons. You can plan strategies, tactics through with each other. But see it going well. Never ever foretell your own failure. 
So many times when people come to me for help with sports, if it's sports coaching, sports psychology, the one thing I actually teach them is see it going well for you on the game field. Golfers a lot of the time will always rehearse the ball going where they don't want it to go. You have to actually rehearse and see the ball going where you do want it to go. See it going in the hole every single time. If you do this a hundred times, if you then go out on the golf course, your game will be a whole lot better. So see your negotiations going well. Envision yourself being calm, relaxed, centered and focused and in a really good place. And I guarantee your negotiations, your interactions with narcissists will be a whole lot easier. Okay, you might want to go and watch this whole course again. In fact, you should probably watch it one, two, three times till you've really mastered all the key skills within it. When you feel like you've done that, when you feel like you're really good and in a strong, solid mental and emotional place, then move on to the next training course. That is going to be the mind of a narcissist and how it works. I've been Jason Edwards, thank you very much for joining me for this first training course, Negotiation with Narcissists. Look out for future videos that are coming up and please leave any comments in the section below.